Hi everyone, I'll quickly introduce our project to give you a clear picture of what it is. Metaform is a tool designed to make it easier for businesses to collect data through a customizable form. It helps businesses collect data more easily by using forms to get information of their target people. In today's demo, we'll be covering four key parts. Next page, please. Introducing key features and functions, unpacking our tech stack, outlining operation and maintenance, and highlighting BA's contributions in this project. Now, I'm going to pass it to Dylan, who will be talking about some key parts of our project. Hi, everyone. I'm Dylan. Uh, first of all, let me introduce our authentication system. We provide two ways to register a user account, the traditional email password method and also Google account login. The email verification is used for the email registration process. There are two types of users in our system. They can be either an organization, which is not the main user. In registration, we collect some information about their organizations, such as ABN and their industries or their logos. After that, the admin user can invite their employees to be normal users who can get access to most functionalities including creating forms. After reg registration and login, we also provide users normal account protection and recovery methods, such as password reset. The organization user can also choose to set their profile. And our create or fill form uh, functionality. Our platform allows users to create forms and questionnaires or service with seven different uh, types of questions. Multiple choice question, checkbox question, short answer and paragraph question, or date picker and time picker questions. And the last one is file upload question. For the question titles, we allow creators to add images Links and the text can be styled such as bold, underline to highlight some part of the question. In creating checkboxes and the multi-choice questions, users can add any number of options and drag to sort them and or delete them. The option itself can also be a single image or the combination of image and text. The creator can also choose to allow others to add their answers other than the provided options. In file upload questions, the creator can specify at, min at maximum of five files and in four different types of uh, file types, including document, PDF, PowerPoint, and images. Uh, that's the end of my part. Next, I will pass to Chris. Hi, everyone. Thanks for Dylan. Here is the stack, tech stack of our project. First of all, we choose React as our front end library and use TypeScript, style components, MUI, and Axios. ESLint is used for linting our code. Besides, to manage the state of our application, we integrated Redux. Next page, please. Secondly, our backend is powered by Node.js with RESTful API, JWT, Helmet, Swagger, and Winston. In addition, we use SendGrid for email verification. Next page, please. On the other side, we opted for MongoDB for data storage. Next page, please. Lastly, we use Bitbucket for our version control management and Jira for agile methodology. Next, I will pass it to Ellery to continue the presentation. Uh, thank you, Chris. Hello, everyone. I'm Ellery. Today, Benny, Oliver, and I are excited to present the demo of our project. Right now, we find ourselves in the unauthenticated state. So hit that welcome button. Let's kick off this journey. Here, we present you with two straightforward options to create an account. Either sign up with your email or for the quick draw with Google. To begin with, I will guide you through the steps of the email registration process. Now type in your desired username and email. If the input doesn't meet the required format, 
a friendly error prompt will pop up. An app, uh, after agreeing to the terms, hit the button, a confirmation email will be sent to the provided address. Now find the validation email in your inbox. Click the active, activate button and we will be directed to a personal profile creation page. Actually, it's a very simple process where only your username and password are required. By clicking the reset button, we can clear all the input. Now, uh, to save time, I will demonstrate company binding process in the Google OAuth registration flow. So let's first log out of this current account and uh, give that sign up with Google button a tab. Now let's whip up a company profile in just three simple moves. First off, fill in the name, company name, uh, pick the industry category, and pop in the ABM. Next, grab that company logo from your computer and drop it in the box. Uh, you've got the freedom to crop it however you fancy. And finally, take a peek at the uh, take a peek in the review of the whole information sheet. If anything needs a tweak, you can hit the back button to modify it. And once it's all looking correct, hit submit and you're good to go. Okay, let, that's all. We've completed the whole registration process. Now we're on the form list page. Next up, Oliver will continue showcasing other pages and features. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ellery. Hello everyone, my name is Oliver, and I will continue with the demonstration for company editing, inviting new user, and form creation related features. First, let's go to the company profile page. Here you can see the details of the company we just created. As an admin user, you are able to update the company details. So now let's go to the company update page. On this page, we can upload a new profile page for the company, change the company name, industry, or ABN number. So once the information updated, we can click on the update profile button. And now you can see that the new company picture and information are displayed as expected. Next, let's look into the feature of inviting new users. First, let's go to the inviting new employee page. On this page, you can input one or multiple email addresses. Each email format will be validated by the system. After that, all the inputted email will be listed down below. Now we can click on send email button after that, the email will be sent to the corresponding users. So now let's log out uh, the Metaphone application for now and uh, go into the inbox of our email. Once the email is received, we can click on the Verify Email link and we will now be directed back to the Metaphone website. On this website, we can go through the same steps of uh, personal information inputting, such as first name, last name, and username. And next, we can create the password for this user as well. And after that, we review the information and click on Create. And the new user will be created, and all the information will be displayed on the user profile page. And for the existing user, we also have the option to change passwords. And this is just the page to show you how we can follow the standard process to change to update the password for existing users. So now let's look at the main function, which is creating a new form that contains different type of questions. We can go to the new form page and uh, put in the questionnaire, the name of the form. And as mentioned earlier by Dylan, we can create different types of questions. In this demo, we'll show you three different examples, which are multiple choices question, checkbox question, and file upload questions. For multiple choice question, we can customize the content for both the question and the options. As you can see, we can even upload pictures as the content of the question and the options. Besides, we can also, um, yeah, now we're uploading the picture. Besides, we can also click on the add other button to enable the other options feature. And now for the checkbox question, we can add and remove different options 
And in the meantime, we can also decide whether each option is mandatory or not. And lastly, for the file upload question, we can define which type of files are allowed to be uploaded, as well as what's the maximum number of files we can upload. So once all the questions are defined, we can click on the Save Form button on the bottom of the page, and the form will be created successfully. Now we can see that the form is displayed on the uh, main page. So once we click in, we can see that all the created questions are available to be filled in. So we can fill in the multiple choice question, the uh, checkbox question, and the, for the file upload question, we can upload the files from our local drive with the allowed file type. If we allow the wrong type, there will be an error message saying that this, files, uh, this file type is not allowed to upload. Yeah. Okay, so uh, after that, we can submit the form and uh, the form will be saved in the database successfully. So now uh, I ha we have come to the end of our demo. I will hand over to Kyle from DevOps team to talk about the DevOps related content. Thank you. All right, thank you, Oliver. Um, I'm excited to showcase our product called Infrastructure designed using AWS services. This architecture is tailored to ensure scalability high availability and seamless deployment of our application. Our clients request start as an age with Amazon Cloud Front providing a fast content delivery network service. There are then rolled is through AWS Rock 53, which ensures ensures high availability and traffic flow efficiency. Within our virtual private cloud, we have configured an isolated environment that enhances security. The VPC has an internet gateway for outbound traffic and a net gateway in each public subnet for secure internet access by, by instances in private subnets. An application, an application load balancer efficiently distributes, distrib distributes incoming application traffic across multiple targets, such as EC2 instances, in multiple availability zones, which increases the fault tolerance of our application. For our container management, we are utilizing Amazon ECS with AWS target. This allows us to run our Docker containers without managing servers or clusters, focusing on application development instead. Data persistence is managed by a data, MongoDB database, providing us with a flexible and scalable NoSQL database solution that supports our application's complex data needs. We manage our infrastructure as code using Terraform, which allows us to easily version, replicate, and deploy our infrastructure. Monitoring and alerting are handled by Amazon CloudWatch, which gives us real-time insight into our application's performance and health. For the next, I'm going to hand over to Aaron. Thank you. Thanks, Kyle. I'm Aaron. Uh, Benny, can you put a, the previous? Yeah, this one, please. Yeah, thanks. So now I'm going to walk you through to the CI/CD pipelines. As you can see, we use the big bucket and the Jenkins for running the front-end and back-end CI-CD pipeline. For the front-end, for example, when developers commit a new code in, Jenkins pipeline will be triggered and run different stages to build and test coders and then put the static content into the S3 bucket. In addition, we use CloudFront and Loud53 to do the CDN, which lets end user access our web website faster. Next page, please. Compared to the AWS management console, which might take ages to provide related services, we use Telephone as infrastructure as code to do the same job, just one click away. For example, in our project, we use Telephone to, to deploy VPC, ECS, ECR, ALB, and more AWS services. We use S3 and DynamoDB to save our remote state file. It means the telephone con configuration can be version controlled using Git, allowing for collaborations among team members. And the changes can be reviewed, tracked, and rolled back easily. Thanks. Now I'm going to hand it to the eFarm, please. Okay, thank you, Aaron. 
Hi everyone, I'm going to talk about some of the BA work that I did for our project. My main job was to bridge the needs of our stakeholders with the capability of our development team. We set up meetings with our stakeholders to get a deep understanding of their needs, making sure our plans match their business goals. We also write down the important points, the choices we made, and needs we have to meet. The notes are kept on Confluence and WeChat. It helps us to track the progress of the project and make sure everyone knew the latest news. We also worked on Miro to catch, sketch out the low fidelity wireframes. We drew a simple version of our web pages and used sticky notes to add ideas to make changes based on what the team and stakeholders said. Those frames are really important for the team to get deep understanding of what we are trying to build. Miro let us work together and making quick changes when we needed to. Next page, please. Having daily stand-up meeting was also very important too. We can talk about any problems right away and make sure we were on the right track to finish everything on time. A big part of our work was to take what our stakeholders needed and turn it into a clear plan for our developers. We crafted those plans into our user stories and outlining the goals we aim to achieve, ensuring they were straightforward and actionable. Next, let's welcome Emma to continue. Thanks, Ivan. As another BA analyst, I collected requirements from our key stakeholder. I briefed these requirements with our team members and create user stories and acceptance criteria. At the same time, I focus on understanding and explaining the reasons behind these requirements. From my point of view, it's critical and necessary to explain why we need to develop these features to our team. During the process, I encourage the open discussion so that we can continuously polish the product and it is nice to have everyone's input. What's more, during the project to prioritize the challenging part, after the brainstorming, we have lots of good ideas. But due to the time constraint, we don't have enough time to deliver our features. So I worked with another BA to figure out what should be implemented in the first phase and what features can be delayed for a while. And both of us confirmed these details with the case holder and we run workshop with developers to collect their opinions regarding the technical challenges as well. Um, that's the end of our presentation and thank you all of the team and our mentors and tutors.